That takes us to some awesome example problems from my university students' homework. For each of the following compounds, I want you to write the balanced thermochemical equation depicting the formation of one and only one mole of the compound from its elements in their standard states. Then use an enthalpy appendix to obtain the value of delta H sub F. Now, my typical fashion, I invite you to pause this video, try this on your own first, then hit play, and I'll show you how to do one or two of these on the board. This process is not too difficult. We start by just writing down the compound that we are given on the right side of a reaction arrow, like this. That is step one. Be sure to write down the correct physical state, solid, liquid, or gas, or else you'll have the process incorrect. Step two is look at all of the elements in that compound and write them on the left side of the equation, like this. Now, we're not done yet. This is just the beginning of this process, okay? For most elements on the periodic table, when you do this step, you just write down the elemental symbol and you're done. However, there are seven specific elements that I taught you in an earlier video linked to in the description below as well as floating over my head here that are the diatomic elements. These seven elements do not exist in their neutral state as just that one atom by itself in their formula, okay? In other words, you have to write a two for those because they exist as diatomic, that is two atoms linked together, okay? So because these are of those seven, I write them down as diatomics. All other elements outside of the seven, we just write down as a single atom on the left. We're now done with step two. Step three is to balance the equation. Now, when writing a thermochemical enthalpy of formation equation, man, that's a tongue twister. When writing that out correctly, you have to balance it so as to keep a one coefficient for your product, okay? Because by definition, if you're writing a thermochemical enthalpy of formation equation for a, this specific product, you have to do it for one and only one mole. You can't add a two or a three or anything there, okay? That's just the rule. Now this means that contrary to our sort of typical way of balancing equations, we often do have to use fractions as coefficients here on the left in order to keep this as a number one. Does that make sense? Now I know we're not accustomed to using fractions as coefficients sometimes. Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't, but we definitely will at least have to entertain that as a possibility in this type of scenario, okay? You can see that on the right side of the equation, I have two oxygens, and on the left side, I have two oxygens. That's balanced, but the nitrogens do not balance. I only have one nitrogen on the right, and I have two on the left. Now, normally, you might think, oh, let's put a two here, and then start uh, toying with things from that point forward, but you cannot do that, because again, for thermochemical enthalpy formation equation, we have to keep a one right there. So what do we do? We're gonna to have to add a one half coefficient here next to the nitrogen, because one half, multiplied by two equals one. Now I have one total nitrogen moles on the left and one moles of nitrogen on the right. Now the last step of this process is to write the delta H of formation. So you write down delta H with a little uh, degree sign above it and an F subscript. The degree sign means under standard conditions, which as I discussed, are 298 Kelvin, 25 degrees Celsius, and one atmosphere of pressure. That's what that note means. So the standard enthalpy of formation of this is equal to some number. Now to be honest, or to be complete, I guess, and correct, you have to write both of these things. You have to write the balanced equation and the delta H of formation. And usually you write it to the right over here, but I don't have enough room in front of the camera to do that. So I'm gonna write it down here. But when you're writing a thermochemical equation, it's not correct to just write the equation and not write the delta H of formation. You have to do both. Okay, it's, it's almost like writing a sentence. It's an incomplete sentence if you only write one part of this and don't write the other, okay? And as we all know, if you start a sentence without finishing it... All right, so in order to get the number here, we have to look it up on a table. And as you can see at the table shown here, this is taken from our appendix in the textbook that I recommend for my students, which is chemistry, the central science. But you could Google and find a thermodynamic table elsewhere if you wanted. Nevertheless, you need to make sure that you look up the specific thermodynamic value or enthalpy of formation for this specific substance, which is NO2 gas. Make sure you get the right physical state. Don't look up NO2 liquid or NO2 solid in this case because those substances actually do have enthalpy of formation values as well, but they will be different from NO2 gas. So when looking up specifically NO2 gas on our table, you can see that we have positive 33.84 kilojoules per mole. So that is what I will write down here on the board. So what I'm telling you is that this is the answer or the full complete sentence of thermochemical equation for part A. 
Now, one thing I'm realizing I neglected to do is to write down the correct physical state of N2 and O2 when they're in their elemental substances at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. So N2, what is it, a solid, liquid, or gas? Yeah, it's a gas, okay? And we can see that showing at this table. Most of the elements are solids. There are some that are gases and, if, and two that are liquids, bromine and mercury in their elemental state. What about O2? Yeah, O2 is also a gas. So you have to write these substance uh, physical states, solid, liquid, or gas for all of your reactants as well as your products correctly, along with the delta H of formation here in order for this entire thing to be correct and full sentence, okay? That is the correct answer to part A. Now we'll do the same thing for part B. Starting with step one. Step one is we take this substance and write it on the right side of our yield sign, being sure to write down the correct physical state, solid, liquid, or gas. Now we take each element that's found in this formula and write it on the left side of the equation. So I have carbon, I have hydrogen, and I have oxygen. But for any of the elements that are one of those seven diatomics, I have to write a two. As you'll note, hydrogen is one of the seven diatomics and oxygen is one of the seven diatomics. So I'm gonna write down little twos next to them, okay? Now I'll write pluses between each element. Carbon is not one of the seven diatomics, so I just leave it as a letter C. Now I have to write down what physical state these exist in at basically room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere pressure. Is carbon a solid, liquid, or gas as seen on this table in its elemental state? Yeah, it's a solid, so I'll write that down. How about hydrogen and oxygen? Well, as we just learned, they are gases, so I'll write down gases next to these, okay? Now we're done with step two. The next step is balance the chemical equation, adding coefficients. Now again, for thermochemical equations of formation, we have to keep a one coefficient in front of our product. That's the rule, okay? It's one mole formed of our product. Otherwise, we'd have to change the delta H value formation, okay, from our table. So I'm gonna keep a one here and add coefficients over here, which sometimes requires us to add fractions. So I've got two carbons here on the right. To balance that, I add a two here to the carbon on the left. Over here, I have five hydrogens here and I have a sixth hydrogen over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I only have two hydrogens on the left, so how can I make that match? I can add a three coefficient here, because three times two is six. Now my hydrogens bounce. Now on the right I have one oxygen, and on the left I have two. How can I fix that? By adding a fraction. So the coefficient I'm gonna add is a one half. I realize that's all squished together, sorry. Now to finish the sentence, I need to make sure to write down the correct delta H of formation value under standard conditions, which I have to look up on a table. As you look up on a table, I think under the heading carbon in our appendix from our textbook, we see the delta H of formation for this specific compound, C2H5OH liquid, as opposed to gas. Now don't get this confused. The gas one has a different value, okay? Make sure you match your physical state correctly, okay? This number comes out to be negative 277.7, kilojoules per mole. So I write that down, and this entire thing then becomes one complete sentence and is absolutely correct, and the answer to part B.